For Liquid Nitrogen by Jennifer Maiden In her citation for Liquid Nitrogen, Griffin Poetry Prize judge Suzanne Buffum remarks, Jennifer Maiden's Liquid Nitrogen may very well be the most contemporary collection of poetry you'll ever read. Over the course of these dense, obsessive, and allegorical long poems, Maiden has created an absurdist theatre of global politics in which the spirits of public figures from across the last century share the stage with politicians, terrorists, dissidents, and fictional creations from our continuous present. Combining a freewheeling, meditative style with crisp, lucidly elegant lines, Maiden's philosophical verse investigates the poetics of narrativity itself, not only as mediated by the news on TV, but by the no less ethically charged realm of art as well. An extended meditation on the uses and abuses of power, the moral gravity of liquid nitrogen is buoyed throughout by Maiden's self-effacing sense of humor and her tenderness towards her grown daughter, Catherine, who stands at the heart of this collection. Epic in its scope and utterly eccentric in its approach, liquid nitrogen is a work of rare passion and unprecedented poetic achievement from one of Australia's most prominent living writers, alert to the point of twitching, like the ox to whom she likens herself on page one, who nevertheless still tramples through the difficult. Jennifer Maiden was unable to attend the Griffin Poetry Prize readings in Toronto in June 2013. In her place, the Griffin Trust invited writer Leslie Greentree to read from Jennifer Maiden's work. Leslie's poetry collection, Go Go Dancing for Elvis, was shortlisted for the 2004 Griffin Poetry Prize. It's an honor to be invited to read Jennifer Maiden's poetry. Um, it's also incredibly intimidating. I keep telling myself she's not watching this through live stream tonight, and then I'm fine. Alexandrian turquoise. The Nepean tends to that hue after sunset, sky blue, if the sky were the true color of an Egyptian goddess, semi-precious. In astronomy, the new galaxy this week is tiny, the shape of a lozenge. They say like an emerald cut diamond, but emerald cut looks innocent, clear through in the center with no bright light shaking facets. The river looks innocent like that, a deadly reassurance in its mirror. Another person drowned in it this week, Yaramundi, yes dear, you must be one of the world's most lethal rivers. In astronomy, when our galaxy crashes into Andromeda, billions of light years in the future, we will look like an emerald cut, probably, they say. Where a Gamba Dam water floods weeds to Hawkesbury, so the emerald cut shines smooth and fine and chill as liquid nitrogen again, here from the dead dam depths, and under it the golden turquoise, like semi-precious sky, like any shattered sun, to shine like water diamonds, like all revenants, is private, but returns. A public habit, lying, it is mine. <laughs> 